Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. New model kit on the bench here. I'm going to try to attempt to build this 1967 Impala SS 427, which is cool. Big block Chevrolet. Not a Chevy fan, but I'd take it. I'd take it all day long. It's also going to be painted in one of these three colors of the MCW paint. It's a, a Highland Green Metallic, Dark Burnt Orange Metallic, or Le Mans Blue Metallic. And I'm kind of leaning to the blue. But anyway, I am going to paint it with this MCW paint, so we'll be able to see how that works. What's the first thing you look at when you get a kit and you open it up? What What is the first thing that you analyze? Um, mine is just all around how much flashes I have. Flash isn't a bad thing. It just takes you a little bit longer. So this kit, fortunately, um, I don't know what the... I haven't gone on scale mates to see what the date of this, you know, when these molds were built, but it's not too bad. They've at least been taken care of, but it's not a huge high parts count car. Most AMTs are not uh, very limited on the, the chrome tree, which, you know, sometimes can be good. Uh, chrome parts aren't always the best fitting parts and things like that. So we've got a nice set of chrome rims um, that will be black washed to death along with the grill and then a really nice looking back bumper and a few other odds and ends chrome parts but other than that the body looks nice um i don't really see any issues outside of just normal model car stuff so uh do some cleaning up i'm excited to be able to use this new paint i've got to go look at the paint chart again to see how to mix it um, but yeah, so this is going to be a fun build. So I'm glad you guys came along. Thank you for coming by. And if you hadn't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscription button. That would really help me out a lot. I'm going to get some parts glued together. I'm going to get some primer on them and we'll get going. So one of the things that I do, and it's a great habit to do this, and I'm sure I'm not the only guy that does it, but these large chrome grills and large back bumpers, well, you'd better fit them before you primer your body. I mean, you can clean the flash off of it and sand it and it looks great. But sometimes it takes a little bit of, of trimming up to get those to fit right. I've already trimmed up on the back here. So I had a few places that were totally filled in with flash, but it looked almost looked like it was part of the body until I took that bumper and fitted it on there. Fitted fitted it is that a word or fit it i don't know my wife would know um so yeah make sure these things fit right because it would be a shame to get all that work done on a nice paint job and then the bumper not fit right and you have to start trimming on that that fr that fresh paint so put it on there fit it make sure it fits really really nice and it's going to look just how you want it to. I haven't even tried the front here. Let's see. It looks like it's going to fit pretty decent. After I get this fitted, then I'll take and wash my body and my hood as well. That's another thing that you want to make sure fits right is your hood before painting anything. Put it on there and get it fit right. A lot of times your edges will need to be will need to be uh, leveled up or trimmed up. And what I do is I take a piece of like 1,000 grit sandpaper or whatever this is. Yeah, this is actually a thousand, maybe a little bigger piece. But because most of the time your edge of your hood is nice and flat. If it has a rough edge or something like that, rather than taking our knife and kind of cutting it up, we just take it on there and go press nice and even and just go back and forth gently, back and forth gently. And you'll clean up those edges really nice, just like that. This one actually needed a little bit of cleanup and I'll have to take and bump the edges down a little bit. I can feel a little edge if you'll rub your finger across that you can, you would be able to feel it. Um, so yeah, those are some of the things I would do right up front. I tend to forget to explain things when I'm doing these builds and I'll just get it built. Like some of you guys actually want to see the process a little bit more in depth, it makes the videos a lot longer, but sometimes it's needed. So that's step one. 
well step one's opening it up step two is uh fitting these bumpers and um uh, or these big see because this one's a built-in bumper the grill is built into the bumper and so I, it, it it needs to be fit so get that all fit don't glue it in there but fit it and make sure it's going to be really nice fit make sure your hoods fits really nice and because this is an amt kit it fits wonderful so we have no problems there i'm just joking i know amt kits can sometimes be aggravating but i think that's mainly because the molds are really old but anyway give them a break guys all right here we go let's uh get this thing washed in simple green so i've got simple green in a pump-up sprayer i'll spray the body and i'll wash her down good and i'll let it dry that in the hood because those are your two most important things these other parts you can get away with i don't i don't clean these because the undercarriage is black the door panels they're you know they're not going to be high gloss in in the main focus of your of your build that's the outside take the most time on the the uh, preparation of your body all right uh give me a second and i'll be back stand by all right so i'm mixing up my primer i've got the body all ready to be painted or primed and the hood so the primer this mcw primer one part primer two parts uh reducer says you can't have add hardener and it will accelerate it um quite a bit uh it'll make it cure time like four to six hours or something like that um anyway here it is so i got this little bit mixed up that i'm going to use to prime these with so i'm going to set the camera up shoot some prime shoot, shoot some primer out of my airbrush and we'll see what it looks like stand by All right, so the body is primed, dried, and sanded. So uh, I took a piece of 5,000, 1,000 or 1,500, then I knocked down some of the places I need to uh, to take care of. Then I went over the whole thing with like 5,000, maybe 3,000. Let me see what it is. It's a really fine sandpaper. So just to get, um, it is 5,000. So 5,000 and just gave it a, just, cleaned everything up it's ready for paint and the color that i'm going to use is this le mans blue metallic but oh boy look at that anyway so i'm going to mix this up set up the camera and shoot some blue paint so stand by So I've got the body painted. Paint turned out very, very nice. It's curing right now in the incubator and I've got all these parts. This is the entirety of the parts. They're all, from what I could get glued together, they're glued together to where I could still, I don't like to go too far with gluing parts and then paint and everything. Um, Get, it gives you a let's say I could I could bolt this pan down to the frame still paint it all flat black It would give me difficulty though to get under in certain places if I wanted to weather the bottom of it So you can go so far with gluing parts together to still get a quality looking build With the frame here. I've got the suspension all in place and I will be able to spray that and still have a quality looking build same with the engine Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Just depends on if the heads and the valve covers and everything are the same color as the engine. 
this is a your classic big block Chevy so it's going to have orange everything except for the exhaust manifolds and the carburetor I went ahead and put the carburetor on there uh, reason being it's a lot easier for me to paint it why it's attached to it than it is to try and hold it and paint it the same with the exhaust manifolds to try and fit these guys um, after I've painted them separately and not have signs of glue and stuff like that, it's easier for me to go in there and paint those as they're on the engine. Um, the oil filter, you have no choice. It's built onto the oil pan. So there's, you know, the starter, I am going to leave it separate. The starter's right over here. I'm going to leave it separate because I can. But anyway, the reason I'm saying all this, most of you guys that watch my videos, I, you already know what to do, but sometimes there is a new builder that's getting into this and they're like man how do you do that well this is how I do it so I take a piece of sprue on the bigger pieces like like this uh, floorboard portion or the bottom of the the car and I'll glue a piece of sprue in a place that's never gonna be seen that that portion of the fuel tank it will not be seen once you paint it and get everything on it so I can pop that off same with the seat here take and I glue a piece of spruce because you gotta be able to hold this thing and if you take and clamp one of your alligator clamps or whatever, there's nowhere on this that you could clamp it and, uh, and it not be seen that there's a place where there was a piece of the clamp. Um, I also use toothpicks because on these smaller pieces, the, the sprue is just too big. So I have a bunch of toothpicks. I've got them right there. And they're the little hors d'oeuvre toothpicks. So it's got a flat, I'm sorry, it's not focusing. It's got a flat end on it. You don't have to cut it off. Um, so I, my exhaust pieces, I, most of the time your mufflers have a flat spot on, or an indention on the inside of it. That's where I glue it at. Um, but the same with the firewall here. It's on the back side. Never going to see that. So when you pop that off, you'll never see where that glue was at. And then you have the pieces that you can hook to the alligator clip. So they won't, you'll have, a, you have places that are hidden so you can, you can clamp them on there to paint them. And on the wheel backs, I always just tape them to a piece of a, a tape on a stick. So I'm going to paint, get these parts painted, let them dry. Some of the 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 engine I'm going to paint it. Uh, I'll paint it primer black. The chassis I'll go flat black, just straight flat black. I'm not going to prime it first. I'm just going to paint it with flat black. The engine I will paint it with um, black primer. Then I'm going to go over it with orange. The exhaust I will paint them. Uh, primer black and then go over, go over them with my uh, mist of silver uh, color so you get that you get that uh, darker colored metal like I like to do it but anyway and so on and so forth so that's how I do it and let's get busy stand by
So since your parts are all drying now, can't really do anything. There's some other prep work you can do to try to get the best out of your build. And one of those is the black washing the grill. Normally, I would um, use the Tamiya panel line accent. But on this particular grill, because it has these round, really sharp rounded, that stuff is so thin, the Tamiya, it will just run down and pull at the bottom and it won't, it won't be even. So what I'm going to try is I'm going to try this. And if this doesn't work, I can just wash because this is a water-based acrylic you just go out there with the water hose. If it doesn't look good to you, just blast it back off because it doesn't stick that well to chrome anyway. So I'm just going to take some of my just flat black acrylic paint there and let's find a brush to do. Just take one of my brushes here and I'm just going to paint it in there and then I'm going to go back with one of these, uh, or probably all of these Q-tips, different shapes and stuff, and highlight the high spots. So let's see how this works, if we can do it. You don't want to intentionally get it all over the bumper down here, because you make a mess, but let's get it painted in here, and then we'll come back and hit the ribs and see if it will take the paint off, and see how that looks. Doing, black washing a a grill is, to, in my personal opinion, the difference in it looking like a toy and it looking like a um, a real car. Again, that's my opinion. If you don't do this, this is okay. You don't have to. I'm just showing you how I do it. And honestly, guys, I don't have a lot of experience in this. I I was out of the model seen for most of my life i've come back into it and have a lot of great influencers um since since i've come back but i'm still trying stuff i'm just like any other new modeler i'm just trying stuff to see how how does that work um, don't be afraid to don't be afraid to try new things So get it around that emblem there. I believe when we hit this with the Q-tip, it'll just come right off. Maybe I need to go all the way up there. Yeah, it should just it should just take it right off. And and again, if it if it doesn't look good with this acrylic, you can just take it outside and hit it with the water hose, and it'll all come right off. And if that doesn't work, get a little brush, but it will will definitely be removed by water. This paint also goes a really, really long way. One of these bottles can last a long time for just doing touch-ups and stuff. A really long time. And it's cheap. I don't know how this is going to turn out, to be honest with you. Again, I wanted to do more of a tutorial on this video rather than just a build. Most of the time I just get caught up in building it and forget a lot. Uh, of the details and just assume that everyone already does that or knows how to do those things and I thought you know this time maybe I need to slow it down a little and uh, see what we can see what we can learn all right so boy does that look good let's see what I can remove now oh yeah it comes right off I bought these uh, guys off Amazon. They're um, real quick nail nail tees. They're very they're firm, so that's what I like about them. The tip 
it's like extremely firm so and it's very pointy so you can get down in there and do your business so just clean off any of those ridges like around the headlights here clean it off and let's see what it does to this when we run it across oh yeah see that's just taking off the the part we don't need now it will smear so you'll have to continually change your q-tip so it just piles up on there so just continue continue to roll the tooth tooth did i say toothpick q-tip around and you go over it several times let's see And also once it's dry, this stuff, when it dries on your chrome, it still just really will knock right off. So if you're trying to use it on a, on a place that you'll handle, um, it's probably not the best idea because it is very easily knocked loose from this chrome. It just doesn't stick to it. Oh, this is actually looking really nice. See that? Blacking it out. And it just so easily comes off. So right there on this corner, just clean it up. Kind of drag it across the the ribs there. Oh shoot, I dragged it across the ribs a little bit too much in one spot there. And you can always go back and touch it up. Yeah, so nice. Usually I use black wash and, and the one thing with black wash, it would take, if you really want some dark, definite lines, you'll have to do it several coats. You'd have to let the black wash or the Tamiya panel line accent, you'd have to let it go in there and dry. And when it dries, it, it settles so you get darker places where, where it was, you know, there was more pulled up. And you have to do it again and uh, maybe again and again to get the desired darkness but it seems like with this acrylic paint because also it's very forgiving because you can just rinse it right off if you make a mistake but the bad part with it is if you touch it you're going to um, you're going to disturb it and possibly wherever your finger goes it's going to remove some of it so you have to be it has its pros and its cons wow cool check it out well, that look nice okay so that's what we'll do um I'll, i will put some black wash around this uh as a matter of fact let's go ahead and do it i will use the to me on this though so shake this stuff up and just to highlight around some of the edges, like around, I'm trying to point, around these taillight edges and things, you're going to have the taillights are going to be inserted from the back on this one. So we want to, you know, shadow. Oh, heck, my brush just broke. Okay. Stand by. Let me get my brush out of there. Okay. Yeah, my brush fell off inside there. Never had that happen. I've had this for quite a while. So just going to go right around the edges here. Going to give it some little makeup just to, again, bring out some shadows. Not much. You don't have to pile it on there. It wicks also. It just like runs. So just get it in there around the, it, around the any crack you see. It's going to lighten up too. So when, when it dries, it's not going to be quite as dark. So you don't have to worry about that. But I like to go anywhere I see a... Apologize for being so darn shaky. Anywhere I see a crease. You can also go back and this stuff rubs off pretty easy too. Not as easy as that acrylic, but... It, you can clean it up pretty well. If you've got a place that's you don't want it on it, you can go and rub it out with a nice 
firm uh, Q-tip. And then you, there's an SS emblem right here. You see that? It's not really, ever, you can't see it that great, but if you'll just rub a little accent over the top of it, it kind of brings it out a bit. But that's all I do on this. And then, like I say, take the, clean up your edges where it may have run. And that's it. Just gives it a little of a, bit of a shadowing effect. And it makes all the difference once you get it once you get it together all right so next I'm going to not on camera but I'm going to install my headlights and uh, use the Mod Podge for that and then I have my windshield and all those things that are going to go in after um, I tell you what let me let me pause the video I'll come back and we'll install those headlights because we can do that right now stand by all right so let's install these headlights and the tail lights I have them both here so I've got the mod po mod podge not mod podge wouldn't want to be corrected there it's mod podge and uh, inside joke a little bit there I've been corrected before in the comment section about it's not mod podge it's mod podge whatever okay so take a little toothpicks how I do it I see other people do it with a little paintbrush or whatever I just take a toothpick tip and I'm going to go right around the inside where the headlight's going to stick. This stuff dries clear as it can be. So, and it's pretty sticky. So, good thing is, it'll hold that headlight in there. Um, once it gets down there, it kind of sticks. So, it'll fall out if you were to accidentally turn it over. So, get you some glue in it. And I've already broken the. I've already broken the headlight. See them right here. They're already broken loose. Get let's okay. So you know these little guys have the the marks on them, right? Like a real headlight. St get them straight. Oh, that's one thing. My pet peeve is if I can't get my headlight straight, just drop them in. I pre-fitted these. That's very important as well. To pre-fit, you don't want to get the glue in there and ready to go. Drop it in there. It doesn't fit. Um, I take my exacto knife. When they get in there, they don't want to lay in right. Excuse me. Get in there and you can move them around. Oh, man. Come on. Get them in there and press them in. And get them nice and straight, which that looks pretty straight. But yeah, get those headlights in straight because you can see those little details if you look close enough. Get them all set in. They'll go back and straighten them. You can use that tip of your exacto knife to turn the headlight if it's not straight. You can kind of push it around. Well, I don't think you guys could see anything I'm doing. Sorry. Well, went too far. Gosh, I don't. I keep moving on. I'm sorry. It's hard for me to see past the camera. Let's get them all nice and straight. And you got. It's not super glue, so I mean, it's not just instant bond. You have time to uh, make sure they're straight. Okay. Pretty decent. Look at that grill. Doesn't that look nice? All right, for the tail lights, they're easy. These guys just pop in from the back. So I'm gonna take some Mod Podge and go here, just where it's gonna sit, and maybe just a little around the edge. You can use this Mod Podge for other things too. You don't just have to use it for glass. I mean, it is glue, so. I wouldn't advise building the model in its entirety with this stuff, but I say it is glue, so you can use it. Come on. All right. Pick this up nice and carefully so you can drop it. There's 
one. There's two. It's not sticking with the flip. Looks like I've got to go and put a little around the edges of it. So guys, I think this will probably be the last segment of video number one of this build. This would be way too long to do in just a uh, single video. But on the next next video, part two of this, oh, get in there and be still. Part two of this, I'm going to finish detailing this. Um, you can't see it quite as good on camera, but the black gives it that detailed, almost like you've black washed it already. So when you, you kind of mist coat it, but anyway, what I was talking about, I'm going to come on the next video. I'm going to run the spark plug wires. I'll detail the engine and run the spark plug wires. Um, begin to do the assembly. Maybe I can get this done in, in two parts, the video on the next part, um, get the assembly done. Also remember those exhausts that I shot. See the, the nice color that that leaves with that, uh, it's the epoxy appliance paint. But anyway, next portion will be more of an assembly rather than getting things uh, painted. So uh, that will be next. And I appreciate you guys watching me build this 67 Impala. And it's going to turn out nice. Also, the next video will be um, bare metal foil. So I'll do the bare metal foil. Looks like there's a strip here all the way around the wheel wells. A um, few little decals. This only has a few decals. It has mostly license plates, but it does have that 427 decal um, and some uh, amber. It's like some uh, blinker lights for decals. But anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope that this helps with um, with with you guys if you're newer. And some of us, uh, again, I'm no, by no means a seasoned modeler. I've been doing it a couple years, three, four, five years, but I'm still learning. Just wanted to share some of the things that I do and hope that it helps. But I want to just thank you all for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you have not already subscribed, please hit the subscription button. Please go over to our Facebook group and join that as well. We're having such a great time over at our Facebook group. Um... If you can answer two questions and agree to not be a mean person, you can be a part of our group, and we'd be glad to have you. We're having such fun over there. Also, go to Hobby Nut Models, where I got this kit from, and uh, check out Mark's inventory, HobbyNutModels.com. Link in the description as well as the Facebook link. Don't forget to go over to my Teespring store. Um, I have, let's see, I have stickers, um, T-shirts, hoodies. I got some coffee mugs and some other cool little things. But go to my Teespring store, also linked in the description, and pick up one of those things. It would definitely help me along the way um, and help me to keep providing content for this channel. And um, I am so, so grateful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And we will be back with part two. And we're going to have a big block Chevy under the hood of this uh under the hood of this Impala, all wired up and looking cool. So guys, thanks a lot. You guys take care, and we'll see you on part two. Bye.